My name is Tara Feladrutoe, and I'm the founder and the CEO of House of Tara. Um, I studied law at the Lagos State University, always had the, this aspiration that I was going to be a, a fabulous lawyer, very successful, uh, that could speak different languages, was passionate about international law. Um, but I got into university and found out that that wasn't really my passion, that was my father's passion. Um, and I, I realized my passion for entrepreneurship. The question was what, on what platform? Um, and um, I worked at a, at a perfume store that also sold cosmetics and gave me the opportunity to um, interact with women and see the power of, of makeup and, and how women respond, respond to it. Um, I started as a bridal makeup artist, you know, had my first bride 21 years ago. Um, and it was, you know, one of those very successful moments for me um, because it was also the daughter of the chief of naval staff during the military era, which meant that I was like the vice president of Nigeria's daughter's wedding. So it was a hugely, hugely um, televised wedding covered by all the different media houses. And she had just graduated from university, but had um, a massive bridal train of maybe about 10 to 12 young ladies who were also getting married soon. And of course, that prepared me for you know, my business because I now had this first client and then all these other young ladies who were also going to be my clients. And, and that was how we started um, as, I started as a bridal makeup artist. Of course, the business has grown beyond that. Um, today we have a, a retail arm distributing our own line of cosmetics across the country. We have 29 stores. Uh, we have training centers, 19 of them, where young people who want to become makeup artists can train to start a business as makeup artists. Uh, we also have our, our beauty rep beauty representative uh, business where we develop young women who are passionate about beauty, who also want to be entrepreneurs, but using products um, as, as their way of empowering themselves. So journey of 21 years, exciting ups and downs, so many, and I'm sure we're going to talk about some of those. The low moments uh, for me on this journey have, I think they, they, they have, um, they have been, you know, so many of them, so, so many of them, and I think from different stages. I, I think one of the greatest um, challenges I remember, and I recall more recently, maybe in the last three years, was when our products was counterfeited. And um, it, we just, I went to China, and as I walked into a, a small shop in the market, the woman recognized my accent and knew I was Nigerian or from Africa, and she asked me if I was interested in Tara products and if I wanted to sell Tara products um, in, in my country. And I looked a bit, I was startled, because you know how somebody's calling something and you can't even imagine in a different country. And I said to her, um, okay, yes. And she said, she wanted to convince me, so she decided to show me invoices of products that had been shipped to Congo, to Republic of Congo, to Gambia, and the likes. And here it was, she then showed me the products, and these were my products. They were the same packaging, they were so similar that I almost couldn't tell the difference. And I, but I could tell they were counterfeited, but they were selling them in mass. I also knew that it was, these were being sold in Nigeria, but we just didn't know where it was coming from. Um, I, I think building a brand and then see somebody else benefit from it uh, largely was a, very demoralizing. And also because we also didn't have uh, the institutions in the country to protect a brand like, like Tara. This is a Nigerian brand, wholly Nigerian. I started this business with 15,000 Naira, right? Have been a source of inspiration to so many other people who built businesses in the beauty space. And the government didn't have what it took to protect our brand or to even fight us, fight the counterfeiters for us. So it was a very uh, low moment for the business because it also affected our sales and our revenue because when people were thinking they were buying the original, they were actually buying the fake. We struggled through trying to fight on our own. And this is what owning a business in Nigeria, especially owning a female business in Nigeria, is you, you have to be everything. You have to provide your own power. You have to provide your own infrastructure. You have to train your own people. Even though they've come out of university, you start to train them all over again. And then we add that to then count, fighting counterfeit. It was really ridiculous but I'm happy that um, we've, we've learned all that tricks 
to fight the counterfeit. I'm not going to share that. We've learned other tricks. So we've quietly, in a subtle way, grown a little bit above it, but it's still prevalent. I remember when I was looking for um, a bank loan, and this is gender specific, and I went to see the MD of the bank, and he'd asked me for collateral. You know, what collateral do, do you have? And I did say to him that, you know, um, I didn't have any landed property to be able to give as a collateral, but I did have stock. And he said, well, they don't really do stock, they only do landed property and what have you. And then he said to me, um, why don't you ask your husband um, to give you something as a collateral? One, assuming that my husband had. Two, assuming that um, there's no way I could have had. If I didn't have, if I had, maybe I would have said, right? And then I looked at him and I said, with all due respect, sir, if my husband had come to you to ask for a loan, would you have asked him to ask me uh, for a collateral, right? And he did, and he laughed and said, oh, he's really sorry for saying that. Um, and he was a little embarrassed by that statement. But these are some of the stereotypes, right? Where you just feel that as a business owner, then your husband should be the next person that you should be able to ask for, right? And if it was my husband, then you would not have asked. Um, and I mean, I've, I've had situations where people say to me, oh, you know, you've built a successful business. Oh, she's fell out to his wife, um, wife, and automatically because he's a business consultant, therefore his magic hands have transformed the business to become successful, forgetting that I put in hours, but then, on, he, on the other hand, no one will say he's successful because he's married to me. And so these are some of the stereotypes that I have encountered. Um, I've learned some of them to, to embrace them, be happy that this is my journey. And the other ones, the others that still irritate me, uh, like the issues around government. Yeah. <laughs> balance or better is, is one of those myths, right? And I don't know that there is consistent balance. I think that some things suffer. Um, and, you know, I remember I suffered my own, as, on my own journey as a, as a young mom. I had my children back to back. I have three sons. Um, the first is 17, just turned 17 yet, um, on Sunday. And the second is 15, going on 16. And the third is 13, going on 14. So you can see that I was very busy, all right? It seemed like I was in a hurry to have them. Um, and in the period where I was, where they were that little, and managing domestic staff, nannies who didn't stay, were going and coming, um, participating in school, um, um, being present, doing homework, supervising them, and teaching them little, you know, uh, some of the traits and habits that I want my children to have, respect for others, kindness, and what have you. And I think about all that period, I almost don't remember myself. Right? I felt I gave my life completely to my children, to my young business, and to my husband. Um, and then they turned, I think my oldest went, home to, went off, off to boarding school at the age of 12. And when he went off to boarding school, I, first of all, it was the first time I felt like I was having my own life and I wanted to deliberately enjoy it. And I started to garden, that's part of the things I started to do. Um, I started to invest in mentorship, mentoring other people. Um, and these are some of the things I, I made a conscious choice to make. Um, in terms of managing the home, I think I've been very, very lucky. I have an extremely supportive husband um, who sees women. He was raised by a single mom, so obviously his mom was uh, a professor in geology at the University of, um, of Ife. She was a speaker and traveled around the world. So that's what he's, when he sees women, he sees women as go-getters. And I think I was fortunate enough to marry someone who's exposed to women, who are powerful women, who are successful. And so my husband doesn't have a problem with the fact that I'm speaking in, at Harvard to, tomorrow and I'm coming to Lagos to speak at Unilag to, next tomorrow. He's happy and, you know, and the minute you have that sort of husband who has a view about women, for that light, then the support also comes, and that's one of the things I've enjoyed. I've also enjoyed a very stable domestic staff, and that's the reality. I can, we can all pretend and, and, and think that, oh, I, there's no way I go to work and come back and do all the cooking and, and sweep and clean and keep the house clean, because I like a clean house. Uh, but I was very lucky to have a very committed uh, domestic staff from Washington to, um, to Nani. Uh, our Nani has been here now for 13 years. And I think the, the stability of walking into a house and seeing the same person, Every year, she's become a member of our family, right? Um, gives you a sense of peace. Um, so I don't know that there's ever been balance. I think that every, at every point in time, sometimes my husband needs me more. Like in the last year, you, you're aware that he ran for office. And in that entire year and a half, I gave him all my time. And I worked on the campaign full time, um, which meant that my husband needed to have me 24 seven. And something suffered in that, in that sense, but it's time for me to get back my life. So it's in seasons. The balance, I guess, is in seasons. A 
highlights of my career have been some of the awards um, that we've received as a, as a business, um, both local and international, especially international ones. Um, being, for example, um, Stanford University wrote a case study about the House of Tara, um, and that case study has been used by many of the international Ivy League universities across the world. That was one highlight for us. Um, um, also, it's also about building a company that became one of the top 100 best places to work in Nigeria. Uh, we're listed on, listed on that list two years ago, and for me, um, building a great place to work was important, but then finding that it was being measured by somebody else, and then there's the reward of the recognition was also, I think those are two of, uh, of high moments that I remember and I recall in the business. <laughs> One of the challenges I'd like to see with, as regards to female, female gender is some of the laws that prevent women from um, inheritance. Um, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see more laws put in place to encourage women who have suffered sexual abuse to speak up um, and have the confidence to do so. Um, I would like uh, um, not just the laws, but also in, in terms of um, we as a people, and as a, as a community, how we respond to women who are widowed, right? Um, there's still many, many parts of Nigeria where a woman's husband dies and his family members come and just take over the entire home and everything that the family has, right? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I recall when my, my father passed away uh, almost 20 years ago and how my mom was treated, you know, by a very extremely educated family, how much more a family that is uneducated. And these are some of the things I'd like to see um, to ch in, in terms of changes. Being a woman is having tenacity, break barriers, strength, divine assignment, human being, strong, instinctive, rules the world. I am anything I choose to be. I am a woman. Happy International Women's Day. My name is Olive Emoji. To enjoy more of this, our Ogun get videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.